Um, so uh, I also sent uh, to the chat uh, the version of the slides if anyone wants to go back during the presentation. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to uh, talk at the seminar. Uh, so my today's talk is uh, about Havana Frazanski homology. Um, and as I said in the abstract, uh, Havana Frazanski homology is basically uh, one step further from Havana homology into this uh, categorification world. So we add some additional homotopy layers that allow us to obtain more refined invariants of knots and links. Um, so uh, let me start from a very general idea uh, that is, well, I, I guess it was realized by Rukier. Uh, and uh, by the way, I hope I pronounce his surname correctly. Uh, but the basic idea is that we want to categorify uh, a group of braids uh, in the sense that now instead of uh, having strands, uh, which are just some geometric strands, we, we instead have some uh, complexes that present uh, these uh, strands and the braid relations are not uh, the strict equalities, but just equivalences in a certain uh, homotopical category. Uh, so, uh, as you can see here, the idea is to replace braids. Um, moment. Oh. Is it indeed uh, a categorification of the group of braids, not just braids? Uh, well, um, since you can uh, uh, yeah maybe maybe uh, uh, I don't understand the difference well enough but basically you can construct a complex from any braid and you can take the composition of uh, these complexes and you have inverses so I guess you can call it a categorification of the braid mm -hmm. This is just general words and we will see on examples uh, what is a verification and how it works. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Now, right now, I'm just uh, stating a general principle that we want to replace uh, something uh, that we understand with something that we don't understand and obtain more refined invariants. Uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah. and as, as I said, <laughs> Я хочу для студентов прокомментировать, что во всяком докладе всегда можно найти что-нибудь полезное. Если вы даже не узнаете каких-нибудь новых результатов или поймете, то вы хотя бы услышите какие-то новые слова. Вот новое слово важное называется категорификация. Она в маломерной топологии очень модное слово такое появилось. И... Раз, 20 лет назад. 20 лет назад. И, и вот об, обратите внимание на это слово категорификация и пытайтесь в течение доклада придать этому не вполне математическому см, слову математический смысл для себя. И, и соответственно, в будущем тоже встреча, будете встречать это, это же явление. Да. Давайте дальше. Да. По поводу того, что никто не узнает новых результатов, это совершенно точно. Yeah. Точнее, по крайней мере, доказательств никто точно не узнает. Uh, okay, so um, let's continue. So moving on from uh, this general idea, let me introduce just some notations. So first of all, we consider a ring R of polynomials, uh, where uh, each variable is graded uh, like this. So basically, it's just um the usual gradient uh, the usual even gradient on the ring of polynomials that we uh, exponentiate with this quantum parameter so by this thing i denote the category of uh, r r bimodules and for any uh, transposition um sigma in the uh, permutation group sn 
uh, I denote by R uh, to the power of sigma, the fixed subring of R with respect to two element subgroup generated by sigma. But uh, obviously, yeah, uh, obviously we can take any other permutation and uh, make a similar notation. Um, so okay, what action do I mean? Sigma is just a transposition, not an uh, well, well, I consider just the canonical presentation of Sn on the ring of uh, uh, polynomials in n variables that permutes the variables. И э, нас интересует, если мы берем какую-то подгруппу в этой группе, то мы можем рассмотреть э, многочлены инвариантные относительно действия э, этой подгруппы. Например, если эта подгруппа порождена транспозицией и того и житого элементов, то, соответственно, нас интересуют многочлены от x1 xn, которые инвариантны относительно замены x на x жита и наоборот. Yeah. yeah, that's absolutely correct. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, uh, but um, yeah, we will get more concrete, obviously, uh, in just a moment. So uh, I want to now. I want to define a key concept of uh, all this petrification business: uh, the Zergo bimodule. So uh, we denote by uh, bi for i in this range. Uh, the graded by module that is obtained uh, like this. So we take the uh, tensor product of uh, R over the invariant subring with respect to this transposition between two uh, successive elements. Uh, and uh, here is an explicit presentation of this ring. So uh, as uh, Sergey Konstantinovich said, uh, we just consider the polynomials which are invariant under the permutation of two variables and there is an explicit uh, description of such polynomials uh, that yields uh, this presentation of this uh, tensor product and of this by module uh, note that uh, bi is naturally graded because uh, both are and this invariant subring is graded with these uh, uh, degrees of variables uh, that we had in the previous slide. So uh, we obtain not just any bimodule, but a uh, graded bimodule. Uh, and it's called the uh, ice uh, circle bimodule. То есть мы берем явное представление, явное описание таких инвариантных функций, как э, э, фактор кольца многочленов от двух наборов переменных, в которых э, все пары переменных, кроме и плюс первой, э, отождествляются, и ж равно и ж штрих, а и т и плюс первая отождествляются только симметричные функции от этих переменных. Мы хотим, чтобы сумма сохранялась x и t плюс x и t плюс 1, это то же самое, что x и t штрих плюс x и плюс 1 штрих, и, и произведение тоже самое, не меняется. То есть это симметрические функции от двух переменных. Да. Ну. Okay, uh, so uh, let me just uh, very briefly make a digression that explains that actually we can define circle by modules for any Coxter group. So a Coxter matrix uh, on a set I uh, is the matrix that, uh, well, it's, uh, first of all, we start from a map from the square of this uh, set into uh, positive integers with infinity, such that uh, on the diagonal, uh, the value is always one, and uh, on, um, uh, well, uh, for any i and j, uh, the uh, value is uh, strictly, uh, strictly greater than uh, one, uh, if i is not equal to j, 
uh, and uh, it can be infinity, of course, and we denote by this mij uh, the value of this map on the pair ij. So a uh, Coxter group uh, can be uh, presented like this. So we take all uh, we take a collection of uh, generators that correspond to elements of the set i, and we impose the following relations. So the product of SI and SJ to the power MIJ uh, is equal to one in this group. And uh, this is an abstract definition, but obviously uh, there are very uh, concrete examples of this definition. So the main source of examples, uh, at least uh, in our world, because we're uh, interested in quantum groups and Lie algebras, uh, are finite reflection groups. So uh, a finite reflection group uh, is a finite subgroup, subgroup of the group of isometries of Rm. Uh, usually, of course, one can consider also the hyperbolic space, but uh, um, let's restrict ourselves to the Euclidean case. And it's a finite group which is generated by reflections, as the name suggests. And then uh, W can be presented uh, in this uh, in terms of this Foster matrix uh, as follows. So we take as uh, I the set of generating reflections. And then uh, obviously, since the group is finite, uh, the composition of two reflections uh, is necessarily equal to one uh, in some uh, finite. Uh, uh, in some uh, some finite power of the composition of two reflections is uh, always equal to one. So uh, in three-dimensional space, that corresponds to rotations around the uh, intersection axis of two reflection planes. And obviously, the condition that the group is finite uh, imposes uh, the restriction that the values of this uh, Oxter matrix are always finite. So, я прокомментирую, если позволю. Значит, понятие бимодуля Зоргеля, да, можно обобщить на произвольную группу Кокса. Значит, то, что исходные исходные бимодули, которые соответствует э, транспозициям итого и плюс первого элемента э, это э, группа Кокстера э, серии АН значит э, группа перестановок СМ это группа Кокстера АН минус два АН минус один у нее стандартный набор образующих это как раз э, набор транспозиций соседних элементов для Перестановки n элементов имеется n минус одна такая образующая. В квадрате каждая, каждая такая образующая равна в квадрате каждая такая образующая равна. Есть тождественная перестановка. И, а если мы перемножаем две соседние образующие, то элемент какого порядка? Если у нас и плюс один, а здесь в композиции и минус один и элемент какого порядка это будет? Что будет в композиции? двух отражений относительно соседних темных. Что это за перестановка позиция двух соседних позиций? Дальнейшее молчание. Это четная или нечетная перестановка? 
Композиция ну, транспозиция. Черная. Черная перестановка. Какой ее порядок? What's the order of this product? Три. Значит, это цикл порядка три. Значит, у нас э, это и плюс э, э, вот и, и плюс один и минус один. И минус первый элемент переходит в эти переходит в плюс один, а и плюс первый переходит в минус один. Цикл порядка 3, соответственно, значит, матрица, э -э, матрица Кокстера стоит троечка на этом месте. А, э -э, if two transpositions are independent, so that they transpose э -э, far elements of our Uh, they permute far elements, then the corresponding order is uh, expected to be infinity, yeah? No, if they're independent, I guess the corresponding value is just uh, one because they commute. They commute. No. Uh, just to ну, исходя вот из этого представления... Э... Ну, там должна быть, или двойка должна быть, чтобы это были элементы больше единицы, да? Э -э где должна быть двойка? А, э -э верните, пожалуйста. Да, нет, тут, я, я думаю, что тут какая-то, какая-то, в общем, можно так написать, потому что... Ну... That's what, that's what I was asking about. Uh, whoever... No, uh, no, it, it's fine. No, it's, it's, it's two, yes. Yes, you're correct. It's two. It's two. Obviously, yes. Yes, obviously it's two because the square of this thing is equal to one because they can give it. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Finite Foxton groups can be obtained in a similar way, and uh, each uh, uh, each generator can be understood not uh, not as a transposition but as a reflection with respect to some hyperplane. With respect to some hyperplane and uh, in, uh, in some vector space, like in the case of B and a series or C and series or whatever it is. Okay, let's go first. All right, uh, so uh, now uh, I want to define the analog of grade groups for uh, abstract Coxter groups. So assume that uh, W is a Coxter group uh, on a finite set, although I guess the finite condition is not really necessary, but uh, nevertheless, let's restrict ourselves to this case. Uh, then uh, DW or its associated architects group or its associated generalized break group, whatever you want to call it. Uh, is the group with the following presentation. So once again, the generators are just uh, just correspond to the generating reflections of the Coxter group, and we have uh, a relation like this. Uh, so uh, as you can see, uh, if we consider the um, Coxter group which uh, of type AM. Uh, we obtain the usual grade group because this reduces to the usual grade relation because uh, as we saw earlier, the maximal value of MIJ is three. So we obtain precisely the usual grade relation. Uh, but uh, we can also get some other examples. So for example, we can get a free abelian group if we consider the uh, 
the Coxter group, which is just the uh, Z2, free Z2 module with basis I, or uh, we can get a free group on I if we consider the uh, Coxter group, uh, which is a free product of Z2 uh, I times. So uh, it's uh, a group where all uh, ent entries in the Coxter matrix uh, are infinite except the ones on the diagonal. Mm. Yeah, so. Uh... Гриш, значит, э, M I э, э, G здесь – это количество букв или количество пар букв? Давайте M I J – это э, количество букв. Ну, потому что надо ориентироваться на обычную группу кос, вроде вот для обычной группы кос. Uh, for the usual break group, you have uh, uh, the relation ABBA equals to BUB, so that SI, SJ, SI equals to SJ, SI, SJ. Uh, if uh, one, more, one should replace J by I plus 1 in this relation, yeah? Plus one. Yeah. And, uh, all the other uh, pairs, in all the other pairs, uh, SI and J and SJ, they commute, just commute uh, if uh, J is not equal to I plus, plus or minus one. Here, M. Um, I, I plus one equals to three, and here M I J equals to two. Okay. And yeah. the same uh, the same group can be defined for an arbitrary Coxter group. A brain group is associated to this Coxter group. Well yeah, uh, that's that's true. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so uh, now, uh, I will just briefly sketch the connection with Lie theory. So, uh, take a compact Lie group G. Uh, then, uh, there exists a maximal subtorus in G. So, subtorus just means uh, think, think of the donut, but in sufficiently high dimension. So, this, this subtorus. Uh, or, uh, I guess if you consider complex Lie groups, then uh, it will be the algebraic subtorus, but uh, let's restrict ourselves to real Lie groups for now, uh, since we considered Euclidean uh, reflection groups. Uh, that's our picture. Then we have what's called the real group of uh, this torus for now, which is the quotient of the normalizer of this torus by the torus itself. And uh, as it turns out, the veil group is a reflection group, uh, hence a poster group, and we can easily identify the Euclidean space on which it acts. It's just the Lie algebra of this maximal torus. But then it turns out that all maximal tori in a compact Lie group are conjugate, and this means that actually this veil group is an invariant of G itself, and so we can associate to each uh, Lie group or more generally Lie algebra, uh, a reflection group. And so uh, we see that uh, uh, Lie algebras produce these combinatorial objects. And hence, uh, for any, any Lie algebra, we can define uh, a break group in the manner that we just described. Mm. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I have uh, very little understanding of the geometric meaning for not theory of uh, other uh, poster groups. Outside maybe uh, the uh, completed uh, affine group uh, or of, uh, outside of the affine, affine uh, group of type AM because as it was explained to me, uh, you can actually interpret uh, the 
braid group associated to this one as uh, the braid group inside of a fat cylinder. But outside of this, uh, I have really no idea how to uh, make sense of uh, other uh, other generalized braid groups in terms of knot theory. So, yeah. Uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe someone here knows, but for, for, for now, it's a mystery for me. Uh, okay. So uh, let, let's return to Zergo by modules. Uh, as was promised, uh, if we have a reflection group, uh, and now it's important that we actually have some vector space on which it acts, uh, then we can define a Zergo by module by considering the following things. So, uh, we take uh, generating reflection um, and we take the tensor product as before and we call it the i's uh, zergo by module and uh, actually um, it sort of admits the following description so uh, we can um, uh, immediately see an analogy between uh, well basically basically this is just the correspondence between the function algebras and uh, spaces. And here we can consider the quotient space by the action of this reflection. Uh, we have two copies of this vector space. And what we have here is basically the action group void for, uh, uh, for the action of this reflection. And so this is kind of a general theme that uh, actually by modules uh, sort of present morphisms. So uh, on one hand, geometrically, we have a group point, and on the other hand, we have algebraically, we have a bimodule. So uh, that, that, that was just uh, my attempt to conceptualize this construction of a Sergio bimodules. So it doesn't come from nothing. And we actually have some geometric pictures. So the Sergio bimodules encode an action of a reflection on a vector space. Basically, basically the idea is like this. Um, Grish, скажите, пожалуйста, вот вы рассматриваете группу порожденную отражениями, да? И модуль Зоргеля вы определяете для каждой образующей этой группы, вы фиксируете какой-то набор образующих и определяете Зоргелевый бимодуль для него, или вы определяете ну, как бы теоретически его можно определить для каждого отражения, но, насколько я понимаю, как бы его обычно определяют для фиксированного набора образов. Ну, то есть, вот как у нас там в СН есть какой-то, вот, значит, там эти примитивные отражения. Да. Вот, значит, для них, для них, вот, для модуля Зортика. Окей, mm -hmm. okay. so we fix uh, a set of generators which are each of which is a reflection and we uh, construct Zergel by models for uh, each of these generators. Great. All right. Uh, so, uh, yeah, here is a bit of general nonsense and I apologize in advance for this. Uh, so the idea is that um, we actually have the following two categories. So uh, denoted by this uh, fancy B mod so the uh, objects of this, uh, the zero objects, well, zero arrows, I don't know, are just rings. Then the one morphisms are just uh, mm -hmm. by modules itself. So the rings are polynomial rings, yeah? Uh, no, no, uh, it's, it's just a very general construction that I'm saying that we can take uh, this kind of category. Yeah, in practice, we will restrict to polynomial rings, but uh, right now, I'm just describing another general idea. So uh, I'm trying to explain how this categorification works. So we can consider uh, instead of, uh, I don't know, say category of rings, uh, we can consider a category of bimodules. Uh, and not just a category, but a two category. It means that we have some higher data. And uh, here we have uh, as objects rings, as morphisms between rings, we have bimodules. And as morphisms between morphisms, 
We have morphisms of Bay modules, meaning that these are like uh, homomorphisms of abelian groups, uh, which compute with the action from the left and from the right. Uh, and the idea is that when um, we study this category of uh, bimodules over a thick string, we basically study the automorphism group or the loop space of, uh, well, the, yeah, the loop space of uh, at the point R. So just like in topology, we st study automorphisms of a point in a topological space, which are expressed by taking the loop space based at this point. Here we study the category of bimodules uh, as an analog of this uh, kind of loop space. And to get uh, some, some additional homotopical information, we consider not only uh, bimodules, but we actually consider chain complexes of uh, bimodules. And so that's, that, that's the idea of categorification. So we take, we take uh, some object, we take loops based on this object in a suitable, uh, suitable two category, for example, the two category of bimodules that I described. Uh, and uh, this uh, gives us some extra homotopical data. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Ну, ну так, что мы с кольцом как бы ассоциируем такое, ну, как, как бы пространство Питер, у нас ну, как бы такое алгебраическое, что вот ну, как бы автоморфизмы кольца это бимодуль. Mm -hmm. Мы изучаем эту группу Питер. Ну да, ну что, что как бы что морфизмы между кольцами это, это бимодули там с разными кольцами, а тут мы просто взяли одно и то же кольцо и получили петли. Хорошо. Ясно, не знаю. Я я я я я uh, and this is done using the Ukier complexes. So denote by Ti uh, the uh, I through Ukier complex, which is constructed like this. So we take uh, the uh, sort of bimodule which corresponds to Si, uh, and then uh, we map it to a shifted ground ring. So uh, the map is. Uh, like this, and uh, there is obviously a unique extension of this map to the whole uh, to the, the to, to a map of bimodules. So why 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 we need this shift? Well, because uh, in uh, this uh, bimodule uh, we actually have the degree of uh, one in Q minus one instead of uh, just one. Uh, as we should have in R. So we need to shift it to obtain a genuine morphism of graded by modules. Uh, and uh, the mapping BI, is it unique? Uh, uh, yes. Yeah. Ну, он однозначно продолжается из условия, что это единица первой петельницы. Окей. So, uh, so you define BI as the only mapping that takes one to one, but uh, shifts uh, the Gradient, yeah? Yeah, we, we have to shift the gradient on the nose so that it's a morphism of gradient by modules of degree zero. Mm -hmm. uh, значит, ah, uh, это морфизм степени 0, да? Ну да, да, но с восприятием, что можно ничего не сбегать, просто получился бы морфизм, ну там, ну, формальной степени, наверное, Q, потому что у нас все проэкспоненцировано, но... Uh, Ну вот мы хотим степени 0. Как бы. 
То есть у нас модули BE в степени единички равна Q минус первой, а в модуле R в степени единички равна единичке. И мы хотим, чтобы этот морфизм был однородным и степени 0. Окей. Yeah, and we also define what is uh, uh, denoted by this ti minus one, and it will be apparent why we denote it like this. Uh, the following, uh, the following uh, complex of bimodules, uh, where we consider uh, this thing uh, shifted uh, in the opposite direction, and uh, the map is uniquely uh is uniquely characterized by this so uh here this si upper star denotes the linear function which is dual to the reflection so basically since we have um a reflection it is defined by a certain reflection plane and we have the equation of this plane uh, we can normalize it and that's si upper star So, for example, for SM, this will be this thing. Да, and uh, uh, значит, у нас uh, модуль ПИТ порожден отражением на СИТ. Это отражение относительно какой-то гиперплоскости. Uh, в случае серии это отражение, а почему относительно x и минус x и плюс 1 со штрихом? Ну, no. Потому что я всех обманываю, у нас на самом деле этот BI, он же ну, как бы определяется как некоторое произведение. И ну там, ну там, ну как бы, что, что, что вот у нас есть отождествление, там, вот, ну, вот, как бы, в общем, у нас, у нас, у нас там есть такое отождествление, из-за которого у нас получается, что ну, вот, вот, вот должна быть функция. Вот. Но я не знаю, может, это какие-то не совсем оптимальные объяснения, потому что это не совсем честное уравнение там, прям, в одном и том же пространстве, но вот из-за отождествления это уравнение... Xi plus one prime. Mm. Okay. So, what's the key? Mm -hmm. uh, all right. Uh, so here is a brief recollection of what is the um, category of complexes up to a chain homotopy. So assume that we have some additive category, meaning that uh, we have a structure of a billet group of morphisms, and it also has finite sums. Uh, then we denote by uh, this CHB of A, the category of bounded complexes in A, means that uh, we have non-zero uh, non groups only in some bounded range of degrees. So, for example, a complex that is concentrated in one degree is okay, and the complex that is concentrated in all degrees is not okay. Uh, and we define the uh, category uh, of uh, chain complexes up to uh, chain uh, homotopy as a category with the same uh, objects as uh, this category and with morphisms obtained by taking the quotient of uh, morphisms between complexes uh, by the equivalence relation defined by the chain homotop. Вы позволите мне своими словами сказать то, что вы говорите, а вы скажете, правильно я говорю или нет. Конечно, да. Значит, бывают многообразия или топологические пространства. Топологических пространств бывают комплексы и можно сопоставить комплексы и соответственно эти комплексы бывают гомологи при этом 
гомотопические эквивалентные пространства имеют одинаковые гомологии. И могут сопоставляться разные комплексы, но гомологии этих комплексов будут одними и теми же. Поэтому э, возникает желание всякий раз, когда появляются какие-то комплексы, у них какие-то гомологии, определить операции над этими комплексами, которые не меняют гомологию, которые, э, которые э, сохраняют гомологию комплекса. И э, в этой ситуации, когда это удается, мы говорим, что эти комплексы гомотопически эквивалентны. Но это не чуть сильнее. Ну скажи. Нет, нет, там, что эквивалентность комплекса плечет равенство гомологии, но это не, ну, да. не, не, не только. Не только, да. То есть э, это не одно и то же, но э, по сути вот э, гомотопическая инвариантность это некоторые действия с комплексами, которые сохраняют их гомологию. Э, а э, Значит, гомология Хованова розацкого или гомология Хованова изначально – это э, как раз построение комплексов, э, по, э, построение по узлу комплекса или по диаграмме узла строится комплекс, э, гомология которого и являются инвариантами узла или зацепления. И поэтому нас интересует гомология в тех комплексах, которые мы еще не построили. А поскольку, поскольку нас интересует гомология, значит нас интересует гомотопическая инвариантность. Вот поскольку, поскольку гомотопическая инвариантность сохраняет гомологию. И это, это подготовительная работа к тому, чтобы сказать, о каких именно комплексах идет речь. И какая их гомотопическая, что будет считаться их гомотопическим вариантом? Гомология – это один из инвариантов, который не меняется при вот этой гомотопической инвариантности, эквивалентности комплекса. Но, но это не, не полный инвариант. Whether I was correct, Rich? Well, uh, yeah, yes, definitely. I mean, I just wanted to say that um, basically this construction is not as good as it could be because uh, usually people just take the derived category of uh, complexes because usually we're dealing with abelian categories and everything works well, but unfortunately the category that is constructed from Sergio bimodules and consequently rookier complexes is not a billion, it's only additive. And that's why we need this kind of definition. So uh, abstractly speaking, one can just take the category of complexes that invert all quasi-isomorphisms, which are maps that induce isomorphisms on homology and deal with that. But uh, instead, uh, instead we have to deal with this kind of category where we identify by the uh, genuine uh, Chain homotopy, as uh, Maxim Eduardovich said, that's a stronger condition than just inducing an isomorphism in homology. Um, а в каких случаях uh, категория Zorgelevich bimoduli не является Abelevich? Вот в Франции никогда не является. Никогда не является. То есть для, для серии А тоже не является? Нет, нет, там, там, как бы, там какая-то капитальная проблема, то есть... Uh, ну, там просто, это, там, чем, на самом деле, я ничего из этого не понимаю, как бы, на примерах, но вот люди говорят, что, э, значит, э, проблема такая, что, ну, в принципе, можно просто взять категорию комплексов, взять ее производную категорию, там, в ней взять то, что натянуто на бимодуле Зоркеля, но в итоге получится что-то странное, то есть... Э, в общем, если, если вот как-то аккуратно брать только то, что там такие комплексы, которые можно там более-менее с помощью сдвигов получить, там прямых слагаемых и сумм получить из э, бимодули Зергеля, то там как бы э, ничего хорошего, э, ничего Абелева не получится. Это так. Понятно, да. Окей, okay.
Yeah, okay. Uh, so now now uh, we can uh, define uh, the category as P V, uh, where V is a represent uh, representation space of a certain reflection group, and uh, as beam uh, V is the full subcategory of uh, um, bimodules over R, spanned by R and B I's and closed under uh, sums shifts, uh, tensor products, and direct summons. And then we denote by this KV, this uh, bounded uh, category of complexes up to uh, chain homotopy uh, uh, over this category of uh, circular bimodules. So, and this category as uh, Sergey Constantinus said earlier, will be the natural place for various invariants that we will consider. Uh, so now uh, we finally arrive to the categorified braid group. So uh, denote by M uh, a bimodular weight links, by M a bimodular weight links. Note that we have the same ring here. That will denote by just M M the tensor product over S. So that's basically the composition in this uh, language of two categories that we discussed earlier. That's basically the composition of morphisms, the tensor product. Then uh, for a Coxter group. Okay. Uh, yeah, so for for a Coxter group uh, on a finite set uh, I, uh, we have uh, the uh, chain homotopy equivalence like this. So that's basically the braid 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 relation. And that's that's the key theorem of Fouquier's paper that uh, we actually can replace uh, replace uh, braids by, uh, by these Fouquier complexes and obtain uh, this relation in the category KV. So uh, we have uh, an equivalence like this in KV. Well, in KV it's just, it's even in the quality. So. Uh, well, an isomorphism. Mm -hmm. uh, so now uh, I need one additional construction, which basically will yield the uh, Havana Frasansky homology. So assume that we have a bimodule, uh, then we can consider it as uh, a module uh, over this tensor product algebra, so we take the ring R, we take the opposite ring when opposite ring is just the ring where the multiplication is reversed, but since we're dealing with commutative rings, it doesn't matter, it's just isomorphic to the tensor product far with itself. Uh, then the quadrilateral uh, homology of M uh, is just the uh, derived functor, the total left derived functor of the tensor product of M with R over this over this ring. But basically, that's just the tensor product of bimodules. So R is naturally a bimodule over itself. M is a bimodule over R. And when we take the left derived uh, functor, we just obtain the usual Tor functor. Uh, of uh, M and R over this ring. Uh, this homology has some geometric meaning or some tool and it will have. <laughs> okay. Uh, and Hochschild uh, homology, a homology of which complex? Um, sorry? Where is this complex, which we take homology? No, no, it's just for the P-module. It's just for the P-module. 
no conflict at the moment. No, uh, yeah, uh, there will be something said about uh, about the complex that can compute this homology, but for now it's just the uh, thing that we define for uh, a bimodule. And by the way, it's naturally an R module, so uh, uh, Hochschild homology sort of cues one one one, one copy of R, uh, and also. Uh, we can put this in, in yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, in the definition of the Hochschild homology, there is a tensor product uh, with some exponent. What is this exponent? It's it's a bold letter L for left left derived functor so yeah that that's what i wanted to explain right now so we can put it into the following picture so consider just the tensor product with r over the same ring that goes from uh say chain complexes over uh Zarkyl bimodules uh into uh just the chain complexes of uh bimodules over r then uh, we have two localization functors that go from uh, chain complexes into this category K here and here. And this uh, total left derived functor is basically the universal approximation to this functor uh, here. So it has a certain universal property that it uh, best approximates this functor from the left, something like this. Okay. Yeah, that's that, 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 that that's the explanation of this letter L and uh, yeah. Okay. So uh, a sort of concrete method for computing Hochschild homology. Uh, so uh, for any choice of R, uh, each M, uh, well, at least when R is like in our case polynomial, uh, a, a bimodule. Uh, like this, it needs uh, a free, uh, hence projective, uh, resolution over this tensor product ring. Uh, and hence, uh, we can compute the Hochschild homology like this. So we just take this uh, free resolution, we tensor it with R, uh, and we take the induced differential, uh, and this complex computes the Hochschild homology. So. A standard standard technique from homological algebra how to compute a torque factor. Uh, all right. Uh, so finally, we arrive to something that is called Havanov Rosansky homology, unfortunately, over braid and not of a link or not. So uh, for a braid beta that can be represented like this in terms of the uh, basic reflections, uh, we can define a complex uh, T beta as a product, uh, well, as a product in the sense of uh, tensor product uh, of these complexes. Uh, so these are Routier complexes, and uh, epsilon just stands for uh, either plus or minus one. Uh, so uh, Uh, the fact that this uh, complex is well defined, at least up to a chain homotopy, immediately follows from Routier's theorem, which asserted that we have uh, braid relations. So if we have two different presentations, it doesn't matter. We obtain something that is chain homotopic. Yeah, and then. Uh, <laughs> Uh, это uh, морфизм какого-то, uh, ну, морфизм соответствующего бимодуля Зоргеля, да? Uh, в каком смысле мы берем их uh, произведение? Не, это, это, это же комплекс, это комплекс бимодуля Зоргеля. Значит, uh, мы можем взять транзитное произведение комплекса. Значит, uh, Комплекс, какой длины комплекс? 
Они, ну, я не знаю, один, два, ну, какая конвенция. Там, там одна стрелка, да? Одна стрелка, да. Ага. То есть каждая атеита – это комплект, состоящий из одной стрелки. Два, два объекта и один морфизм. Да? И мы берем тензорное произведение всех этих, всех этих комплексов. Для, значит, у нас коса представлена в виде произведения базисных в виде произведения образующих или обратных к ним. Да? Мы, соответственно, берем произведение либо этих комплексов, либо обратных к ним. Получаем такой здоровенный комплекс, который э, надо, видимо, понимать как куб. Да? Такой, если, если у нас каждая атеита – это отрезок, то танцевное произведение – это куб. Такой размерности такой размерности, сколько э, образующих у нас задает нашу косу. Ну да. Окей. И, соответственно, у нас получается такой кубический комплекс, томология которого должны быть инварианты относительно там, движения Редемейстера или чего-нибудь в этом роде. Да? Это сейчас будет, это... Да. Это и называется комплекс руки, руки да? Или как да, 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 комплекс руки косы, да. Угу. А, ну да. Окей, so now we have this Hovland-Frosensky uh, homology of break beta defined like this. So we just take the Uh, Hochschild homology in each degree. So this is a complex of uh, circular bimodules. We can take uh, Hochschild homology in each degree. And then we, can, we just take the differential, which is induced from the differential on uh, T beta. And then we take the homology of this thing. So we uh, apply a homological construction two times. First, we take Hochschild homology in each degree, and then we take uh, just homology with respect to the differential that we had, uh, and this differential induces another differential in Hochschild homology. На этом мы получаем некоторую функцию на косах, да? Нам хотелось бы получить инвариант узлов или зацеплений. Что мы для этого делаем? Сейчас все будет. First of all, I just wanted to briefly mention that this Kovanov uh, Kazanski homology is triply graded, and don't try to follow grading conventions because each paper has a different one. But basically, we have a Q gradient, which is given by the gradient on R, a T gradient, which is given by homological gradient on Rukier complexes. So Uh, we can think of, well, it depends, it depends on your convention. So if you want to uh, think that, uh, for example, the differential always uh, lowers the degree, i.e. you have homological conventions, then uh, I guess you should think uh, that you have something like zero and minus one here or one and zero here. Once again, please don't try to follow the conventions uh, because uh, various authors change uh, the gradient very often. And finally, we have the A gradient, which is the Hochschild degree. So since we take the Hochschild homology, it has its own degree. And so we obtain three gradients. And this is why it's called triply graded. Okay, uh, but that was just an aside. Uh, so uh, Yeah, uh, let me let me just briefly state another construction, and then we'll go to uh, invariance with respect to Markov moves, which shows that it's indeed a, a sort of an invariant of a link. So uh, uh, from now on, we will restrict ourselves to the case where the Coxer group is SN, uh, and then uh, we have the following statement due to Rasmussen, uh, which asserts that for any braid. Uh, the R module uh, 
like this. Uh, so it's just the Hovano Frazanski homology of uh, beta is free over this subunit. So we take the uh, degree one symmetric polynomial uh, and uh, it's free over this, uh, well, subunit generated by this polynomial, which means that we can take the quotient of this uh, uh, triply graded. Uh, vector space uh, module uh, this ideal, then we obtain something that is called reduced one of Rosansky homology. Okay, uh, that's really great. And the point of, this, of it uh, is that uh, if we have a knot, uh, this produces something finite dimensional. So it's good to have a finite dimensional invariance and uh, we can uh, quotient out this uh, action of this polynomial and obtain some sort of finite dimension. Действие Ну да, да, ну да, 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 что-то я это. Окей, so yeah, uh, yeah, that's uh, basically the passage to the reducible sub-representation of the uh, regular representation of a sub. Okay, uh, so now uh, let's uh, say something about invariance with respect to, uh, well, isopathies of links. So first of all, let's recall the concept of a Markov move. So uh, for uh, a closed braid, we have uh, the following three possible moves. So one of them is conjugation, which uh, uh, interchanges the uh, top and the bottom of the closed closed uh, braid. So uh, uh, the top becomes the bottom and vice versa. The we also have the positive stabilization, so uh, we can take a close break, we can take a strand, uh, and then we can perform the following operation. So basically, we of course do nothing, but uh, the idea is that we take take the strand, then uh, we go like this, and then we go under it, and we uh, get back into this uh, uh, LF thing. So it's called a positive stabilization because uh, here, uh, well, this uh, this uh, strand goes goes over 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 uh, over itself in this fashion, uh, and uh, similarly, dually we have an. We add the multiplication of the stability of plus one, yeah, to the most absolute stability of plus one. Yeah, and similarly, we have a negative stabilization where we uh, take the inverse. So the Markov theorem asserts that two uh, links are isotopic uh, if uh, there exists. So, uh, of, of course, uh, I'm talking about links that are obtained by closing certain braids. Uh, if there exists a sequence of Markov moves that connects, so that's. Uh, 
именно, если их можно перевести друг в друга, последовательности вот таких действий. Сопряжение, положительная или отрицательная стабилизация. Вау. So now uh, we arrive to the key theorem about Kwanov Rosansky homology that it is actually uh, invariant in a certain sense. So uh, this strictly graded space uh, is invariant under conjugation uh, and positive stabilization. And the negative uh, stabilization shifts the Hochschild degree by one. So uh, certain 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 degree uh degrees stay invariant and the Hochschild degree may shift by one mm. and here is a reference for this it's the original paper of Hovana from Rosansky uh yeah uh okay uh so basically uh, that was the construction. We obtained a link invariant, at least in some sense. Mm. Uh, yeah. Да, вот э, в такой тройной градуировке, с учетом этой тройной градуировки. У Хованова изначально же была двойная градуировка, да? И, соответственно, да, там была двойная градуировка, и получались... Э, ну, там, на самом деле, вот эту неинвариантность относительно степени Хохшельда, ее можно как-то починить, сделать так, чтобы все было инвариантно, но... Какая-то очередная идея с перегруппировкой всего во всем. А, ну, и... Значит, а здесь э, инвариантность при э, сопряжении и при положительной стабилизации, а при отрицательной стабилизации степень Хокшильда ломается, да? Но, наверное, да. про нее можно забыть, да, совсем. Оставить только две градуировки, тогда так? Ну, можно так сделать, можно там как-то хитро переградуировать, так чтобы... Либо, либо починить. Ну да. One can repair the option degree, redefine it in order to make it uh, being preserved under negative stabilization as well. Yeah? Yeah, just the point is that it's very difficult to keep track of various degrees and these uh, three seem to be the most natural because we can explicitly see where they come from. So obviously, obviously we can consider various uh, other readings that are mixes of these three, but uh, they are not as explicit. Okay. Uh, all right, so now we arrive to the uh computational part of my talk i don't know how many time uh how much time i have left but uh, 10 minutes but you uh, can continue next time all right uh so uh, let me just uh formulate uh, the following uh key theorem due to uh hogan camp and mallet which asserts that the havana frasansky homology of all positive torus links uh, so it's not necessarily a knot. Uh, it can be uh, linked with many components. Uh, positive means that all crossings are positive, but here it just means that uh, for torus links, it means just that M and N are non-negative. Uh, yeah, so uh, the key theorem is that the hovana frasansky homology is supported in even degrees, and the point ray polynomial uh, can be computed using an explicit recursion. So, uh, as you probably saw, the Havana Frasansky homology is very difficult to compute because uh, of this huge uh, here complex construction, which grows exponentially with the number of crossings. So, it means. 
each time you multiply by a segment, yeah, you add a, yeah. an additional dimension to the cube. Uh, and uh, uh, what do you mean by even degrees with respect to which gradient? Uh, oh. uh, well, uh, with respect to a certain gradient that I will uh, uh, demonstrate in, in the next slides. Вообще, это общее свойство гомологии. Если оказывается, что гомология сосредоточена только в четных размерностях, то все дифференциалы нулевые, потому что дифференциал меняет размерность на единичку и должен попадать к ноль. Поэтому если гомология чет, если гомология сосредоточена в четных размерностях, ну или можно представить себе извращенный случай, когда они сосредоточены на нечетных размерностях, то их легче считать. Конечно. Можно построить такой комплекс, который, такой комплекс, в котором дифференциалы будут нулевые. И вот утверждается, что это так для гомологии хованова розанского для положительных вторических зацеплений. Значит, мы берем, что такое вторическое зацепление, мы берем то, представляем виду произведения двух окружностей, берем одну из этих окружностей на ней и поворачиваем, приклеиваем, умножаем на отрезок и приклеиваем с поворотом на n. Положительную сторону. Поворотом. Так что вы n раз перекрутился приклеиваемая окружность. Вот получаем зацепление, положительное зацепление MB. And in this case, the answer can be given explicitly. Yeah? Yes, and we will, we will even see some examples. Uh, okay, so first of all, let me just sketch an idea behind the proof of this result. So uh, the idea is that there exists a sequence of complexes uh, such that uh, for uh, for them we have the following relations. So uh, k1 uh, is equivalent to uh, the complex that we'll obtain on uh, one strand uh, one strand break, uh, and then we have uh, an identities uh, in the homotopy category like this. So. Uh, Equivalent in which sense? It is quasi isomorphic or yeah, ch 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 chain homotopy world. Chain homotopy world. Yeah, uh, so uh, we have uh, identities. Yeah, so everything here, all, all these identities are written in this category. Uh, it's, it's rather inconvenient that they have a very similar notation for complexes and the uh, Category of complexes up to uh, chain homotopy, but uh, nevertheless, uh, we have an identity like uh, two identities like this, uh, an identity like this, um, and uh, also an identity like this. So, what does it mean to multiply a complex by a certain variable? It just means that it acts by an appropriate shift uh, of the gradient. So I, here, here I define what is uh, each each new variable. So we have uh, another uh, kind of triple gradient like this, uh, and the statement uh, is as follows. So if we define kappa, tau, and alpha from the triple gradient that we had earlier in the following manner, we obtain uh, identities like this. I didn't define the complexes yet, but uh, the idea is that we have some 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 sequence of complexes like this. Okay, uh, but you know, for now, I suppose it's unclear why we even need them. Uh, so uh, for now, uh, l l let me just uh, clarify some 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 notation. Uh, so. Uh, the picture like this denotes a complex in uh, a bounded complex of circular by modules. Uh, a picture like this, where we close one strand, uh, means that we take a Hochschild homology 
with respect to a ring that is generated by this one variable that corresponds to this uh, strand. And finally, when we put things on top and uh, at the bottom of a complex, it means that we tensor either, either from the left or from the right. So the color corresponds to the appropriate tensoring. And as I said, the variables act by gradient shifts. Uh, all right. So uh, let's, let's, let's consider an example, how we construct, for example, T2. And T2 uh, works like this. So uh, we just take uh, the following complex uh, with the notation that we are used earlier for Rukia complexes. Ну, значит, для того, чтобы посчитать гомологии там Т2 что-нибудь, нужен К2. А чтобы посчитать ТМН, нужны все. Чтобы посчитать ТМН, то есть индекс УК отвечает за количество образующих, участвующих. Ну да, 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 более-менее, да. да, да, да. Вот, то есть, если это m нитей, то нам нужно будет k, да, или k минус 1, что ли? Да, ну, в смысле, там как бы, ну да, ну, ну да, в общем, да-да-да. Если, если у нас, как бы, ну там, скажем, ТМН, и там, ну, каждый, каждый, каждый из них там знаю, больше либо равна, чем что-то, то вот нам нужно К, э, как минимум столько, сколько вот эта оценка. Okay. Yeah, so uh, this K2 is constructed like this. Uh, so uh, observe, uh, observe uh, the explicit form of this complex, and by Uh, so sometimes I uh, shift from uh, denoting uh, gradient shifts by multiplication, and sometimes I explicitly write that we uh, shift by a certain degree, but it's understood that when we write it like this, it means that we multiply by, for example, k, uh, q to the power minus four, uh, and so on. Uh, so uh, it it can be easily seen that actually uh, this part is just the inverse of the Rukia complex that is shifted uh, by minus four, and this part is the genuine Rukia complex. Uh, so uh, now we can observe that uh, if we multiply by the uh, generated Rukia complex uh, from the left, uh, this uh, this formula. Uh, and the fact that the product of ti and ti inverse is equivalent to r uh, leads to the following. So we, we, we obtain this, uh, which can be easily seen to be equivalent to just r. Uh, so this means that uh, this means that uh, we have an identity like this. Uh, Yeah. And uh, the, the, uh, sorry, will you please return to the previous slide? <coughs> uh, this is uh, in the last row, we have uh, ti squared r of r with shifted gradient, with the gradient shifted by 4 to ti squared, yeah. And uh, Eyes also to the right. We have bi there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, as, as you observed, uh, since this uh, index uh, basically corresponds to the number of variables, it's uh, irrelevant here. Mm -hmm. uh, I is irrelevant because it's the number of variables is two, and we have only one reflection. Yeah, yeah, indeed, but just to be sure. Yeah, yeah, to be consistent, yes, certainly it's BI is TI, yes, thank you. Uh, all right, uh, so uh, a simple uh, homological lemma that if we have a short exact sequence of complexes and 
uh, odd homology of A and C vanishes, then the odd homology of B also vanishes, and we have a splitting like this. Uh, and uh, although uh, the source never stated explicitly, but this obviously only works over, uh, for example, a field of characteristic zero. Mm -hmm. uh, so the proof is elementary, which has to analyze the long exact sequence and homology of uh, uh, this uh, short exact sequence. Uh, and uh, we use the fact that over C, for example, where we work uh, any, any uh, exact sequence of uh, vector spaces uh, splits. Uh, yeah, it's true, but essentially when computing Havanov and Razansky homology, we usually would like to work over Z uh, rather than over a field of characteristic zero. Uh, ну вот я, я, я не знаю, тут как бы весь, весь, весь все наше построение, оно же начиналось с кольца многочленов, и как бы поэтому у нас все на полем характеристики ноль. То есть ну, как бы понятно, что на самом деле там все эти отражения можно делать с коэффициентами взад, и там тоже ну, как бы, будет все примерно то же самое. Но, ну, в общем, я как бы не то, чтобы я придумал эту теорию, поэтому у меня довольно ограниченное ну, как бы, понимание того, что можно прокрутить, чтобы ничего не сломалось. То есть... Окей, я... Окей, so uh, apparently we arrived to some explicit uh, formulas for the point gray polynomial of the torus link. And mm -hmm. the theorem of uh, Hogan-Tamp and Mellet asserts that, uh, well, silly me, first of all, uh, we need this notation. Uh, consider a binary sequence of length L, then the uh, modulus of this uh, binary sequence is just the number of ones in uh, V. Mm -hmm. And then uh, uh, for um, two binary sequences with the same number of ones, We denote by P uh, V W uh, a polynomial in three variables uh, such that uh, it satisfies the following properties. So we have the following recursive uh, relations. Mm, I guess uh, it's uh, a bit hard to yeah. uh, understand where, where, where they come from, but uh, the Key point is that the result of uh, Hogan, Trump, and Mallet assert that the homology of uh, torus links, first of all, doesn't have a torsion, even if we consider it over Z. Uh, and second, that the uh, triply graded point ray polynomial can be computed as uh, these uh, polynomial P indexed by a sequence of M zeros and n zeros uh, yeah that's that's the key theorem about uh torus links mm -hmm. uh, значит многочлен панкаре теорического зацепления n m совпадает с таким со значением такого многочлена на паре uh, М нулей и Н нулей, да? Uh -huh. и, э, э, и при этом э, включения никакого нет, поэтому это поэтому многочлен Панкаре полностью определяет гомологию хаванова розанского теорического зацепления, да? Да. Ну, как полностью определяет, но понятно, что на самом деле есть какие-то секретные структуры типа вот этих спектральных последовательностей, но э, как бы как, как группу, да, полностью, ну, или да. Группу, да. Да, да. Группу полностью определяет. Окей, okay, I think we may stop here and 
probably All right. next time you will start with this point and uh, show, for example, how this works for the uh, trefoil ring uh, knot. Mm -hmm. uh, All right. 